Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Today I received these in the post. The Hobby Boss, Trumpeter and I Love Kit catalogues for 2024-2025. Now these were out at the end of February in 2023 and yet almost towards the end of March we don't yet have PDF versions of these available in 2024. So I wanted to take you through these catalogues and I'm going to do those one by one starting with the Hobby Boss catalogue. And going through this, um, they do nicely put out all of the new items at the rear of the catalog. Now, they do say they are 2023. I think that's a misprint. Um, there are some items in there that were announced in 2023. We will get into that as we go through the catalog. So starting off with big scale armor, we have three vehicles all based on the existing 38T that Hobby Boss has in the scale, and these were announced last year, but haven't yet materialized. There's plenty of that though through these new items, so I won't mention it in each case, but just know that announcements for any of the ZY Group companies are often aspirational rather than definitive. Moving a notch down then to 135th scale, we now have a whole host of vehicles that were once again announced last year, but didn't make it. We start off with the Marda 3H, the Flak Panzer 1A, both of these reboxes of TriStar kits. The next three kits are all the US heavy tanks that were announced back in 2016 and 17, and again last year, but haven't yet appeared. The T-54 and PLA-59 were also both announced last year, following a prior announcement in 2020. The next three kits were all supposed to be new tools last year, the 63-2, and the 531 APCs, and the V300 with cockerel gun. We followed that with the late version of the Atch Salit APC, also announced last year and presumably based on the 2014 early version of the same vehicle, which starts a run of an IDF heavy presence in the lineup here and ends our kits seen in the 2023 announcements. We start then with the IDF ITAN 8-wheeled APC and the IDF Neymar 1, both appearing to be new tools here. We then have a slew of Macavers, the 1, the Mark II, and the Mark II-D. Hobby Boss already do the later 3 and 4, so these vehicles make perfect sense. The other tank that makes sense is a version of the PLA ZTQ-15 that came out last year, this variant with additional armour. The next things we've not seen before are a range of Wizent 2s, which are engineering vehicles based on the Leopard 2 chassis. We have the original vehicle, the version with heavy armour, a 2020 upgrade and one in service in Afghanistan. Moving down again to 148 scale vehicles, we have a very large number, 27 in all, and about 60% of these were announced last year too. So the two Panzer IVs, Panther variants, the medium and light Tigers, as well as the Stura ML, were all the World War II announcements last year. Post-war appearances last year were the T-72, two T-90s, the two Swedish Stridsvagen 103s, the three Leopard 2s. What seems to have been added to those are the Dicker Max World War II self-propelled gun, followed by a trio of Challenger 2s.
We then have a pair of Macabre threes. And a similar pair of fours, mirroring what Hobby Boss already has in 135th scale. We also have two Abrams main battle tanks, an M1A1 and an M1A2. And we close up the 148 scale with the Russian Koalitsia SV self-propelled howitzer. The smallest scale we go down to for Hobby Boss in vehicles is 172nd. Here we have 17 new announcements, but again, 14 of them were announced last year, so only three of them are new to us. So all of the S300 and S400 SAM system components the Chinese ICBM, the two railway guns, and BP-42, Russian truck, and transporters are all hangovers from last year. That leaves us with the Panzer Jäger Wagen version 2, which follows the rail line that they have some kits for already. The second item is again the M911 transporter, but with a different trailer. And the last one is the APA 5D airport starter vehicle, which could be quite nice for a 172nd scale airfield diorama. Moving from land to air now, and we start with 148 scale aircraft. Again, we'll start with the ones announced last year that didn't make it. First are a couple of the Hurricanes, the Mark II C Trop and the Mark II D Trop. The Mark I and Mark II C did make it out, so I expect that these two are imminent. The same goes for the next kit, the TBD-1A Devastator, the floatplane version of the main aircraft released last year. We then have two 109s that were announced but didn't come, the E3 and the E4 stroke Trop. as well as the four versions of the Corsair that also didn't happen. More modern announcements last year that also haven't made it are the F-18C, the U-2S, though the U-2R was released, and the Su-33 and J-15. Adding to that list we have a B-24D Liberator, probably based on the J version that will be hitting shops shortly. We then have two Focke-Wulf FW-190 Antons, the A6 and the A8, as well as two more BF-109s to add to the two that didn't happen before. This time the E4, which makes sense if they are already making an E4 stroke Trump, and the E7. These are all CAD renders, so you'll have to take them with a pinch of salt, I think. A bit more modern is the MiG-35. And rather surprisingly, a whole family of F-35s, the A, B and C variants. This would be pretty unique to have all variants in 148 scale, especially given the competition out there for this aircraft. In 172nd scale aircraft, we have a similar tale, with all but one of the kits already announced in 2023 the C-48C Skytrain, the two Devastators, and the TBM-3 Avenger, with the one extra kit being shown a TBF-1C Avenger as opposed to the prior TBM-3. That just leaves us with two more releases for this catalogue, both of which were announced previously. The first A1 144th scale aircraft, the Anatov AN-12, and the second in 1 350th scale, the Shang class submarine. So that's the 2024 stroke 25 Hobby Boss catalogue. As we've seen before, there's quite a lot of carryover from prior years, although some of this does make sense when you see what they're adding, like the 109E4 when the E4 Trop has already been announced. Likewise, development of tools like the D version of the 148 scale Liberator are welcome, 
and make perfect sense to maximize the return of the investment in the large common tooling pieces. But I'm a little more puzzled by other large swathes of unreleased kits in certain areas, such as the 148 scale armor kits. In other areas, there have been releases happening, prior announcements being fulfilled, and even things being released that aren't announced. But here it feels like the whole project has just got pushed a year down the line. Of course, it's difficult to know what's really going on, but it just leaves customers having to second guess these announcements and treat them with large doses of skepticism. I mean, some of these kits that were announced last year and this year were also announced pre-COVID, so it makes you wonder if they'll ever happen. Even with that caveat though, Hobbyboss continues to put out some really interesting kits, and things like the B24J that is just about to reach us have been eagerly anticipated, so I don't think we can complain too much. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I look forward to you joining me for the next of the ZY Group 2024 catalogues. I love kit. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modeling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.